One. Hi, I'm Linda Moulton Howe, reporter and editor of EarthFiles.com. I'm in Stanley, Idaho on the Salmon River, where the moon took its first bite out of the sun at 10, 12 a.m. And adding to the eeriness here is all of this smoke. You can't even see the Sawtooth Mountains. The smoke is so thick. And sadly, it is from a lot of fires that are burning up in what is called the Frank Church Wilderness, about 100 miles from here. But the smoke has been pouring in to this Sawtooth Valley. I've been with a group of amateur astronomers from the Boise Astronomical Society, about 100 people with great telescopes and photographs and talking about other solar eclipses that they have been to. And from that very first bite, for the next hour and 16 minutes, what was amazing to everyone was how bright the daylight stayed, even as through our glasses we were seeing the sun coming down to just this thin line curved. And then at about 13 minutes before totality, it was suddenly very cold. And then at 11.28 a.m., the light everywhere went this kind of strange, murky greenness. And the moon shadow was coming rapidly right from that direction, those hills coming across here. Not that we saw it clearly on this particular eclipse. Sometimes you do. But on this eclipse, it was the murkiness, just like somebody had their hand on a big rheostat. And everything went this strange green down to twilight and then darkness, and because of all of this smoke, all of the rims of all of the hills, completely 360 degrees, they glowed red everywhere. And then you could see stars. And then everybody is just frozen in their tracks, staring up at this black circle surrounded by this gorgeous white corona. It's breathtaking and eerie. And you think of this statement I once heard from an astronomer who said, when you see totality, it grabs a hold of your very soul and it doesn't let go. And then at 1130 came that burst, burst of brilliance. I had no idea it would be so brilliant white light that is called the diamond ring effect. And that is the end of totality. And slowly, the moon begins to move away and the sun is coming back to normal. And beyond Stanley, where we were for this particular part, this was on a path that started 2,000, over 2,500 miles from Portland, Oregon, sweeping across the United States to Charleston, South Carolina. And the path itself was only 70 miles wide. You had to be right in the center of that path, which is Stanley, in order to see this breathtaking experience that we have today. Now, it has been centuries since the last time that a total solar eclipse touched on what we call the mainland United States or the continental United States. The last time was 1,581 years ago in the year 436. The next total solar eclipse that will touch only the United States mainland is not until January 25th, 2,316. That's 299 years from now. It took scientists a long time to understand that solar and lunar eclipses are reoccurring and predictable. Those predictable eclipses are called Saros cycles. And this great American eclipse today was part of Saros 145 that began in the Northern Hemisphere with a partial eclipse on January 4th, 1639. And Saros 145 will not end until 3009. Hopefully by then, a Saros 145 finally comes to an end, linked back to this very day of August 21st, 2017 as well. Finally, maybe humans on Earth will have survived beyond wars to peaceful exploration of this amazing universe.
This is Linda Moulton Howe with an Earth Files news update. Visit earthfiles.com for the latest news about the cosmos, our solar system, and the planet we live on.